Hey everyone, I'm Zach Carroll, and I'm the creator of the Living History Project. First and foremost, I want to thank the Bicentennial Planning Group for taking the time to organize all of this year's events in honor of our 200th birthday. Nights like this would not be possible if it wasn't for all of the volunteers and the town employees who take the time to make sure your experiences throughout town are memorable. I want to thank Dave Smith, Susan Barlow, and the rest of the Manchester Historical Society for all of their hard work in preserving our town's history and always thinking about the future as they make sure it is accessible to everyone. To get involved or to learn more, please visit manchesterhistory.org and sign up for their weekly newsletters. And lastly, I want to thank Chris Silver and Kathy McGuire for their inspirational leadership in the Department of Leisure, Family, and Recreation as they continuously bring out the best of all of their staff and all of our community. So Manchester holds a special place in my heart. It's where my family is, it's where all my friends are, and it's where my grandfather Jim Farr started his business in 1971, Farr Sporting Goods. Matter of fact, I'm actually sitting in here right now in the bike shop where I grew up and where we've been building and repairing bikes for over 50 years. Having lived in Manchester all my life, I felt inspired to make a video that showcases what it means to be a part of this town that has been home to my memories for 28 years. When I began filming, I had one goal in mind, and that was to listen to the stories and interests of people throughout town. And in doing so, it flourished into this beautiful memoir of Manchester in 2023. I've learned that there are many ways to perceive how we live history, from living through historic moments to living alongside historic places, our bicentennial is a special time to reflect on who we are and where we are in this world. While our environment may be shared, our experiences are often different. So I encourage you to document them through writing and creating, through photographs and video, whatever it takes to make sure your story is heard because Manchester's history does not exist without you. I hope the Living History Project is a reminder to be proud of this community and to embrace the preservation of your own lived experiences. Thank you. On May 28, 1823, along the Hockenham River in the forested valleys of Connecticut, a town was born. Driven by silk production and aspirations for quality education, Manchester provided the comforts of a city, while at the same time, the freedom and pure air of the country. 200 years later, we continue to live surrounded by the results of those who came before us. Landmarks, objects, streets, people all with stories to tell. In celebration of Manchester's Bicentennial, we want to honor you, the people that define community, the people whose stories create history, whether you have lived here. 50 years. 44 years. One year. Eight years. 15 years. 10 years. 16 years. 15 years. 18 years. 30 years. 20 years. Five years. 53 years. 25 years. 32 years. 12 years. 15 years. 10 years. 45 years. 20 years. 9 years. 17 years. 25 years. 23 years. 100 years. The stories of today will be the narrative for tomorrow. This is The Living History Project. What makes Manchester unique is we are a community that not only is progressive, but we invest in our public places, which means we're investing in the people in this community. My name is Chris Silver. I'm the director for the Department of Leisure, Family and Recreation. I'm standing here at Glow Palo, one of the many places as a young person I came to and swam and played and made friends. If you're anyone that grew up in this community, you know exactly what I'm talking about, the uniqueness of this place and it being central to your youth and it just seems to stay with you. 
My father was previous superintendent of recreation and as the youngest of eight kids that I had no choice but to drive around with my father in the evenings to check on parks and facilities. I know firsthand how having these opportunities, these spaces, places, programs, how important they were for my development and I realized the path that I take is parks and recreation. My name is Deshaun Valentin. I enjoy spending time with my family here down at Charter Oak. My favorite part about the rec department is definitely the family connections and all the different events we get to you know, partake in with them also. I am Lieutenant Mariah Perez. I've been with Manchester Fire Rescue EMS for 23 years. So our mission with the fire department is to provide the best community service we can. My favorite part about Manchester is the great diversity that's in this community. There's people from all walks of life and to be an active part of that and to provide a service to that community makes me proud to come to work every day. We're going to introduce Bob to this our new is, exhibit. Oh man, this is really something. We have different different oh themes in gosh. each of the cases. Oh, the work that you guys have done. I worked for Cheney Brothers in the mill right behind the main office. I worked in the engraving room. That was a pentagraph machine. They call it a pentagraph machine. That, that etched in the uh, designs on the copper rolls. Uh, you probably heard the name Tom Grady. Uh, he was the top engraver. There was probably a half a dozen engravers who would correct the mistakes that the guys on the machines made, you know. I'm Susan Barlow, the town historian, appointed by the town of Manchester and I'm also a life member of the Manchester Historical Society. When I was in elementary school, I thought history was very boring. And it was actually right here at Whiten Library. And there was a picture of Dr. Whiten, who gave the money to the town to create a library for the North End. I saw his picture, and I asked the librarian, and she said, oh, that's uh, Dr. Francis Whiten. He gave money for the library. I didn't know you were interested in history, she said to me. And I thought, is that history? I thought the history was wars and dates and who was fighting with whom. But at that point, I began to see the building itself was history. Dr. Francis Whiten was history. His wife was history. And one of my projects this year is the 23 walks in 2023. History walks in every part of town. The Cheney Railroad, the North End, the Mansion District, Hollywood, and the Lakeview sections. We've been having unusually large turnouts. I've been doing walking tours of historic Manchester and Vernon, for that matter, for about 23 years, but this year, maybe it's the birthday, we've had a wonderful attendance, 80 to 120 people coming out for History Walks. And I think that learning about the history of Manchester is very helpful in having a deeper connection to your town. My name is Samantha Bell, and I work for the Town of Manchester and the Youth Services Bureau. Today I'm here at Pick and Glassworks to do an archaeological dig with some of our youth. They are getting the full experience and I'm all about that out of classroom time learning. We have so much rich history here and there's so much of it that we haven't uncovered. For example, like I've lived in Manchester for 23 years and I've, I've never been inside Pick and Glassworks and I feel like that's saying something. So this is just such a unique experience for anyone connecting 
Manchester's past with Manchester's future. Hi, my name is Lynn Satilli. I am with the Sculpture Project of Manchester, Connecticut. And we are here at Bennett Academy this morning waiting for the arrival of our second bronze statue of Elizabeth M. Bennett. These statues tell a story of people from our community that were ordinary citizens and they did something extraordinary and we want to honor them. We have so many famous names in Manchester that have done wonderful things. The Cheney family is instrumental in building this community, but we wanted to highlight people that were exceptional in fields of athletics, education, the arts. We started with Joe McCluskey, who was known for his road race winnings, but he was such an exceptional athlete. And to this day, he is still Manchester's greatest runner. And Elizabeth Bennett is known primarily for saving 900 students in the Great Fire of 1913. But she did so much more. She was a free thinker, a forward thinker, and she developed a lot of programs that had never been done in the classroom before. She was a true leader of other teachers, and she was just beloved for her devotion to her students. Hi, my name is Michael Karopian. I was born in Manchester, Connecticut. I've been doing art all my life, and I decided that I should pursue sculpture and um, went to school in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. A lot of it, what I enjoy is doing historical figures uh, more recently. Uh, I'm, I'm able to do some research and on, on each figure, which is something I enjoy as well, history, and, uh, and then put that into three dimension. And uh, when it's done, hopefully it becomes sort of an educational piece, uh, merging art with history. I'm glad that the, the town has still got its charm. They've kept a lot of beautiful buildings and, and, and um, the Cheney buildings, in other words. Uh, it's just wonderful to come back and uh, it triggers a lot of memories, wonderful memories. Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm a garden coordinator and I also write for the town. So my main role is to take care of the gardens, provide food security, and educate people in the town about current environmental issues. My name's Mackenzie. I've been involved with the Let's Children's Museum for about seven years now. We're really providing people with information and knowledge, but we're also providing them with memories and like once in a lifetime experiences that they've never had. It's really special to impart my knowledge on um, conservation and ecology and we need to protect animal habitats and keep animals in the wild safe. Getting kids excited about nature and the environment and animals is just so incredibly special. And if you can do that for all members of the Manchester community, that is like you've done your job. <laughs> At the end of the day, you can go home and say, I did my job today. Here today, we are celebrating the Manchester Bicentennial by doing our showcase of the children's artwork. My job keeps me really happy, getting to interact with children, giving them the information education, sort of like fueling the next generation of either scientists, artists, wherever they may be. This is just like a great town to interact with people and learn from each other. Hi, I'm Cindy Acanto. I'm the vendor coordinator for the Manchester Farmers Market series. Our Farmers Market is always happy to partner with small Connecticut businesses, including businesses from Manchester. It brings food to different parts of our community and shopping options for them to shop locally for healthy food. And it also is a community gathering place. This farmer's market is definitely one of my favorites. I love it. Cindy, who runs the whole thing, is just amazing. She's been so welcoming to me and all of us, honestly. My name is Sasha Fay, the co-founder of Ovel Coffee. I love the fact that Manchester is a very community-based town, and so I'm excited to be here sharing Ovel Coffee with them. They have the Wreck on the Run, which is amazing. They also have some really great vendors out here that sell their products that work really hard to come up with different creative ideas and also get in front of the community. My name is Cleon. I've had Nam Bakery for three years. I worked in um, restaurants all my life. Figured let me 
do something on my own and uh, Manchester was a good place to do that in. I'm Lena. I'm John. We are the co-owners of Perennial. I learned herbalism by way of growing and then educating people at farmers markets and I decided that brick and mortar was a necessary next step. I used to work at a youth center in Cambridge. I was a teaching artist when I was in grad school and that eventually led me to designing programming for young people and D&D &D ended up being a great tool to help young people learn through gameplay. The very nature of Dungeons and Dragons is community. Everybody sits around a table to tell a story together. Manchester was definitely the place to do it considering the history in the area. There was an herb shop here 10 years ago, useful weeds that everyone really loved. And then of course, Capperlands in Coventry is an international herb destination. So Manchester was a pretty easy choice. I can just ride my bike from our house um, to the Cheney Rail Trail and it's like a 14 mile loop back to my house and it's all so beautiful and the trails are immaculate, totally safe and you know, get you back in touch with nature. I grew up in a, in a small town in Connecticut that didn't really have much like community functions, things mm. put on by the town in Manchester. It seems like the town is really involved in getting people together to celebrate things and I would just love to see more of that. I think it builds like pride in the community, um, builds great memories in the area as well, even if you're not from Manchester. So the more stuff we can do as a community, the better. My name is John Macon. They call me Jay around in Manchester. We lost our moms the 28th of October last month and things. And um, we named the store after Mom Dukes. We call it Evelyn's Place. We bring a sense of love and respect out here. We show appreciation for the customers that come through and buy merchandise from, from the store. And sometimes a lot of people don't have the right amount or maybe they do or don't, but it's never too less or too much. We always try to make it comfortable for the customers out here. I always say plant a seed, a small seed with something that you want to do and water it every day with love and hard work and just watch it grow. I wanted to try something and I tried Manchester and it's been my home ever since. My name is Brittany Farr and I am the salon manager here at Jacoby Scott Salon and working here has really kept me in touch with the Manchester community. We offer an array of products that are sourced from companies that are either women owned, minority owned, or LGBTQ owned. So a lot of my childhood was actually spent on Main Street. The library was always my first true love here in Manchester. I grew up going to the trick or treat on Main Street events and a bunch of little crafty events, all of those good things. Hi, I'm Sophia. I'm the owner of the Firestone Art Studio and Cafe on Main Street in Manchester. We started looking around and we came to Main Street and it has that nice downtown feel and we started talking with the town and they showed us around and we fell in love with this building in particular. Today we have our outdoor market. It brings together over 30 local businesses from Manchester and the surrounding towns. You know, it really allows us to connect with the community and being able to see kind of almost a family of people being brought together reassures the importance of art. I'm Brandon, owner of Retro Junk, and down here at Retro Junk, it's all about nostalgia, from your favorite toys and action figures, video games, records, and everything in between. One of the things we hear most down here at Retro Junk is how a certain item brings people back to one of their favorite memories. Nostalgia is a huge part of history. Think about Christmas morning at your grandparents' house the smells, the toys, it all brings you back to that moment in time. My favorite thing about Manchester is community. I loved, you know, town sports growing up, um, all the great local businesses. One of my favorite parts about being a downtown business is all of my great neighbors. I like to frequent places like Silk City Coffee, Urban Lodge, and all of the great restaurants. My name's Jeremy Gerhardt. My family are the proud owners of Silk City Coffee. The wall is actually a massive part of Silk. It, it really brings the feel here. But the story behind it's crazy because when we bought the place, we had no clue this wall was here. We knew the ceiling was here and that's beautiful to look at. They had drop walls so we could lift that up and see the ceiling. As we're just tearing everything down, a contractor comes down and just says, hey, a beam just fell. 
and you're not gonna believe this. We look through just this drywall that is now just busted open and all behind is a massive brick wall, just piece of history, and yet no one knew it was there. My name is Hector Pulido. I am from Colombia. We care a lot about the coffee we make and about the cup that we serve. Coming from a background of a country that's very famous for the coffee, to now working in a place that the coffee, it's coffee and people are the number one priority, makes me feel very proud to be in this community and very proud to be working at Sox City. One of the most incredible things about the town is how diverse it is, and even as a customer, and now as an employee, discovering so many people from many parts of the world and people from many parts of the country, I have discovered that everybody has a story to say and have something, a little grain of sand to put into my own life. And just listening to everybody's life and everybody's stories really inspired me into my art and into my life here in Manchester. And it makes me, it makes me really proud of where I work and where I am right now. We are renewing our commitment to the cause, the cause for equity, diversity, inclusion, and justice. Such a celebration also means reaffirming our faith in the indomitable spirit of humanity. I think Manchester is miles ahead of other US towns. It should be a model for the rest of the USA. No town comes close to it in terms of commitment to diversity and equity. First, we have our ancestors, and they are no longer here in the flesh. But because of their accomplishments, we live the lives that we live today. And their influence is still felt. My name is Ryan Parker. I am thankful for my ancestors who paved the path so that I may arrive Manchester has been my home uh, for so much of my lifetime. I am a son, a father, a friend, a brother, but most importantly, what's deepest in my heart is just the work that I've been able to do, that I've been honored and privileged to do, working with youth in Manchester and really focusing on how poetics and hip hop and reimagining what school looks, sounds, and feels like could really lift our souls and pave way for possibility and carve out spaces for, for healing and youth empowerment. I do know living in Manchester CT has shown me what a healthy community looks like. I've made more than enough friends and all of them like me for me. My hope is really just that our community is a space of safety, a space of justice, a space of liberation and freedom for folks who haven't been able to experience that. My name is Naroon Nahar. I am currently a race and equity facilitator with the Department of Race and Equity for Manchester Public Schools. And then I'm also a co-advisor of the Manchester Youth Commission. The Youth Commission is really special to me because I actually was a youth commissioner when I was a student. So I'm a product of Manchester Public Schools. And so to be able to come back after all these years and now advise this group of young leaders is truly amazing. And what's so special is it is genuinely, truly youth led and youth run. Their voice is really at the center of making sure that Manchester is empowering youth and is including youth in major account decisions. My passion and my goal is to create an equitable community, an equitable environment so that kids and families who look like me and, and others, you know, feel like this is their home, feel like they belong because we have such a beautiful town, such a beautiful community and everybody deserves to be able to experience that beauty, feeling safe, seen, celebrated, heard. My name is Dr. Diane Claire Kearney and I am the director of adult ed as well as the director of race and equity. Here in Manchester. When I got the call that I'm going to be on a wall, I could do nothing but cry. Because when you are not believed, you second guess yourself. And then those false narratives define you. And so to see that I was on a wall was food to my soul. That's what I want my grandkids to see. I'm next to John Lewis and Harry Tubman and Martin Luther King who laid down for me. 
I do this work out of respect for them and in honor of my ancestors. Now I am really ready to give back to Manchester because now I feel like we're playing on a leveled playing field. You must share and honor your perspective, your story, your voice, to unmute your song, to ensure that you embrace the beauty that you are. Back in the 70s, we were less than 2% students of color. Today, we're at 65% students of color. But the attitude in 1970 is not the attitude today. And that's what gives me hope. That's what's inspirational. I believe that we have a school community and a town community that has decided to prioritize difference, to embrace and include difference, and to make people feel that it's okay to be whoever you want to be. My favorite part is how everybody is connected. There's like, everybody's free. There's different types of skin color. Everything is amazing. Friendship, everybody's nice, and it's amazing to live here. There's no right or wrong in anything. You can be free. Just experience yourself. My name is Kevin Zingler. I'm the president and CEO of Mark Inc. of Manchester. We're a nonprofit organization that supports people with intellectual disabilities. Our organization has been woven into the tapestry of Manchester for decades. Our folks have worked in the community, they've lived in the community, they enjoy the community, they go to all the different events and activities that the town offers. So we're here tonight at the Mark Summer Concert Series. This is our 12th season, uh, sponsored by Pratt & Whitney. And if you look out at, over the crowd and you look out at the band that's playing and you see everyone having a good time, you don't see um, people with disabilities, you don't see people um, of different ethnic backgrounds. You see Manchester, you see the diversity that, that makes Manchester a strong community. You see everyone having fun, you, you see everyone enjoying themselves, families, young, old, any age, um, any social background, and that's really what it's about, is educating our community and helping our community and making sure that we have opportunities for our folks. My name's Dan Huppy. I'm a retired battalion chief with the town fire department. I was hired in 1983 as one of the first paramedics in town, and eventually ended up with this flag project as one of my passions with the fire departments. We lost 343 guys on September 11th. Since Thanksgiving Day 2001, we've been flying the flag over Main Street. I'm just, uh, I'm fortunate they've, they've allowed me. I've been retired for five years now, and uh, I'm fortunate they, they allow me to come back and do this every Thanksgiving morning. And there's another story that needs to be told. Your stories. Don't let your stories go with you. Share them with comrades, with family members, with nieces, nephews, children, grandchildren, with anyone you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable sharing it aloud, write it down. Record it. Your stories are the richness of freedom and democracy in this great country. My name is Thomas Sadi. I'm the State Commissioner of Veterans Affairs. We're here today at the Manchester Elks celebrating veterans. This is the first time they've come together to do this ceremony since the pandemic hit us in 2020. And we have veterans here from every conflict from World War II right up through Iraq and Afghanistan. My name is James Morrow. I'm the chairman of the Veterans Advisory Committee. After moving here in February of 2021, I reached out to the town of Manchester. They quickly responded, quickly established the, the Veteran Advisory Committee, which works hand in hand with the town of Manchester in providing services, support, and opportunities consistent with the Connecticut general statutes. I'm a veteran myself, Iraq War veteran, and my whole life has been veterans, where my family are veterans. Uh, my father followed my brother into the military, both served in Afghanistan. When I returned from Iraq, I came to East Hartford, where I grew up. It was a hard transition. Nobody was really there to really guide me or, or show me where to go. I really didn't get any help services three, three to five years after returning from Iraq. 
the transition was very, very hard. So knowing that transition, going through that transition is what really motivated me to see what the Manchester have. If they didn't have it, let's start it. I'm Paul Scapatisi. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I am co-chairman of the Veterans Advisory Committee in Manchester. A retired teacher, uh, Richard Zaremba, got involved in the Banner Project. Being that I'm involved in other organizations in town, that's how I got involved in it. And it was an honor to, and a pleasure to be able to do this. I mean, this is a great thing to honor World War II Korean and Vietnam veterans from Manchester. I mean, this is just lost for words because it's such an honor to, to be up on a light pole knowing that they were you that you served in Vietnam you're you know and uh, I think it's a great thing that the town did and we do plan on continuing it. I'm Master Sergeant Retired Aaron Hurley Dennis. I'm standing here in Veterans Memorial Park at the Center Green of Manchester where we honor our fallen veterans that have come from this town in our various wars and conflicts from our past. It's a special place because we're honoring those that gave the ultimate sacrifice so we could have our freedom. I served in our Connecticut Air National Guard for 20 years. I am a resident of Manchester and I have been in Manchester for 39 years. I joined the Veterans Advisory Committee here in town and I figured it was a way to help give back to the community. We started a local Manchester coffee house at the Army Navy Club. We do this coffee house each month as a way to bring in services to our local community. And another thing I love about the town is the local restaurants that are supportive of veterans. And we support them just like they support the veterans in town. Dear Manchester community, Manchester has much to be proud of as we look back over the past two centuries. Out of a humble and rural past, the community has grown into a thriving, dynamic, diverse, and growing municipality that is an engine of growth for the entire region. In the midst of significant transformation, the one constant has been the resilience, determination, and kindness of the people of Manchester. From the settlers who helped incorporate the town, to the workers at Cheney Mills who help empower the industrial growth of the nation, to the hard-working students and families who today contribute to our region's rich culture and economy, the Manchester community has always embodied the American ideals of hard work, justice, and civic-mindedness. Simply put, we are one Manchester. It is on that strong foundation that we look optimistically towards the next 200 years, while our buildings, streetscapes, and town demographics may change. What hasn't and won't change is the strong sense of civic spirit that anchors our institutions and our people. I'm Mayor Jay Moran. I'm proud to be a member of this community for almost 35 years. Thank you.